answer. Any questions about that? If not, explain how you found the MF again, the process. Sure. So, um, okay. So, if you understand how I found the EF, the empirical formula, then the process goes like this find the molar mass of the empirical formula. If it's the same, then the empirical formula is the molecular formula. If it were different, then we have to figure things out. And in the next example I'm about to do, they're different, so we have to figure it out. So I'm happy to show you that process. So let's do one more example, and this will finish, let's see, these are the last two pages of lecture outline number one um, for lecture, so, and it's again, it's, it's a uh, combustion analysis problem. Uh, 10 gram sample yields 21.2 grams of carbon dioxide and 3.25 grams of H2O. The molar mass is 165. What are the empirical formula and the molecular formula? Oh, this is an unknown organic acid. So uh, since this is the third time I'm going through the start of this process, I'll go relatively quickly. So 21.2 grams of carbon dioxide, 44.01 grams carbon dioxide per mole, 1 mole carbon dioxide to 1 mole carbon. Similarly for H2O, 18.02 grams of H2O, 1.0 per 1 mole, 1 mole H2O has 2 moles of H. So nothing new there from the previous two examples. Type it up, enter it in my calculator. 0 0.482 moles of carbon, 5.79 grams of carbon. Yeah, 3.25 divided by 18.02 times 2, 0 0.361 moles hydrogen, 0 0.364 grams of hydrogen. Find oxygen by subtraction. We have 10 grams of sample minus our 5.79 grams of carbon and our minus our 0.364 grams of hydrogen. And when I do that subtraction, I will be left with grams of oxygen. 10 minus 5.79 minus 0.364, so 3.85. And I know we've done this a couple times. Hopefully it's okay if I go a little more quickly. All right, let me see. It. There we go. 3.85 divided by 16, 0 0.241 moles of oxygen. All right, so now again, we uh, I like to get organized. So C, 0 0.482, H, 0 0.361, O, 0 0.241. 
are my mole ratios that I want to attempt to turn into small whole numbers. I'm going to divide by 0 0.241. That's my smallest number of moles. And I'll do the math sort of in my head. It's going to be C2 H 1.5 O1. which is not my empirical formula because it has this half number in it. I'm going to multiply everything times two to get C4H3O2 as my empirical formula. Now, uh, here's the new part for this problem. The new part says, uh, okay, I have my empirical formula. It is C4H3O2, and I'm going to write that on the next page. That is my empirical formula. The molar mass of my empirical formula is going to be 4 times carbon, 12.01 plus 3 times hydrogen plus 2 times oxygen 83.1 okay given in the problem statement is that the molar mass of the acid is 165 and uh what you have to know is that is going to be the molar mass of the molecular formula. So the molar mass of the molecular formula is 1.65, 165 grams per mole. And that's given in the problem statement. Now, uh, typically what I like to do is if you take the molar mass of the empirical formula, divide it by, and um, let me write this out. Molar mass of the molecular formula divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula you will get 165 grams per mole divided by 83 grams per mole. And the ratio is 1.99 which is 2. So what that means, if this ratio is 2, is that the molecular formula... Excuse me. Yes, question? Could you go over how you got the molecular um, molar mass for me? The molecular formula molar mass? Sure. So if we go back to our problem statement, the molar mass of the unknown, and that... So the unknown has the, mo the molecular formula and it has the molar mass of the molecular formula. So that is given. So we're usually always given the molecular um, formula mass. If you are asked to find the uh, molecular formula, you must have the molar mass. Okay. Cool. If there's no molar mass in the problem, then the only thing you can find is the empirical formula. All right. So the molecular formula is two times the empirical formula, which means the molecular formula is 
C8, H6, O4. And as a double check, you can take and do the molar mass of your new molecular of your molecular formula. And again, you will find it is 165. That is the end of lecture outline number one. Are there any questions before we take another uh, probably five or six minute break? Yes, can you please put the previous page again? again? Be my pleasure. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So like when finding the, um, like I noticed like when you divided the, molec the molar mass of the molecular formula and molar mass of the empirical formula, you got like a decimal. Do we always round in those cases to the nearest whole number? Are you talking about this number right here, this 1.5? Or, because, um, go ahead. I was talking about uh, when, you did, when you were finding the uh, molecular formula from the molar mass, you divided 165 grams per mole by 83.1 grams per mole. Uh -huh. and the answer was 1.99. So like, if we just get decimals, do we just round to the nearest whole number, or did you only do it since it was so close to two? Uh, good question. So... And this is a, a, a finer point about these types of problems. Like when it's a whole number, it will be very close to that whole number. So 1.99 becomes two. On the other hand, if it's 1.49, it becomes 1.5. So essentially we just kind of round to the nearest uh, fifths in the 10 place. So like if we had 1.85, would you round that to two or would you just keep it the same? Okay, good question. Here's the way these problems work, practically speaking, on uh, homeworks and exams. You will never get 1.85 right. because that's too far from a perfect 2, and that's too far from a perfect 1.5. So if you get a 1.85, and I know this is not how real life works. In real life, you're likely to get a 1.85, and then you're like, what do I do now? But on these problems, you won't get it. And really what a 1.85 means if you're doing an exam or a homework question is that one of these other numbers in the problem has a mistake in it. And so that's the time, if it's on the homework, that you come and see me or you talk to a classmate about what, you know, and have them do the calculations. Or like when I, when I, I and I do this relatively frequently, when I make a mistake on the math in here, I can never find it. So I just do the whole problem again from scratch. And then I usually find it because um, there's just so many numbers in this problem that I get lost. So, but yes, uh, hopefully that answers your question about a 1.85. All right, that did, thank you. Sure. Any other questions? Yes, I have a question uh, about the homework. Yeah. Um, the upload ones, the one that we have to upload, and can we submit it twice since it's going to be due like today? And for example, if you submit it and you grade, our grade is not satisfied. Can we just submit it twice? Good question. So um, first thing I'll say is, uh, so the homework is not due at least for a couple days. I think the thing that's supposed to be due today are the lecture outlines. Um, and uh, since you have my lecture outline one and you will have all of your lecture outlines finished today, the only thing you have to do by 11.59 p.m. tonight is figure out how to get them uploaded. Um, so, and that, um, I will be around until 5 p.m. today. Like class ends at 4 and then I have an office hour. So if you just take care of it by uh, 5 p.m., you can ask me all the questions you want and we can make sure you get it uploaded. Now the homework, if I remember, is due, I wanna say in a couple days, uh, to due tomorrow at midnight. Okay, so yes, that seems fast, but um, I'll tell you what, uh, if at the end, at 4 p.m. today when we're done, uh, meeting officially, what I will do is I will reevaluate and ask for input from you 
about what seems like a fair deadline. And I am uh, okay with extending that, like changing it um, to a day or two later, if that will help you. And I imagine it will, and I'm happy to do that. So how about we talk about that? But again, I am happy to do that. Sound good? Yes, thank you. Sure. Yeah, so um, remember, I am making this up as I go too. And so um, I, we have a lot of material to get through. Uh, and we will, um, and we want to pace ourselves. But if something goes wrong, like did on Tuesday, I mean, I'm okay moving the lecture outline due date back a day too, if we need to, I, and we'll evaluate that too. Um, I mean, I think it gives us less time to do the future things, but I also am pretty serious about making sure we don't overwork ourselves, because I know the right amount of work for this class. So. Anyway, this class is a dialogue, and we'll work it out. And with that, uh, I'm going to take a six-minute break. That means uh, we will be back here at 1.52. Um, and I will lecture on Lecture Outline 2, so please have that handy. Um, can I just write it out?